Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, I wanted to talk about Labyrinth, and more specifically, Labyrinth for Master Duel, in just basically every sense, from combos to deck building, and when it comes to the deck building, I want to get really nitty gritty with it, and to talk about all of the various different things that you could do with Labyrinth. Now, if you don't know, Labyrinth just was released, or just got new support, I should say, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, with Lady Labyrinth, as well as Big Welcome Labyrinth, both being introduced into the game. This means that the playstyle of the deck can kind of switch up, and now mostly people are playing the IKEA version, which centers around the uh, Chandelier, Stovey Torby, and Ku Clock, Therefore, all of the furniture pieces, therefore, Ikea. Kind of weird, but there you go. Um, and all of these basically have uh, similar effects where they can either reborn themselves or add themselves back to hand if a monster is uh, is uh, leaves the field via a normal trap effect, like, for example, the effect of Big Welcome. Um, so basically resetting themselves. And then on top of that, uh, Chandelier and Stovey Torby have the ability to set a, uh, a spell trap um, a labyrinth spell trap from the deck, as well as Ku Clock allows you to activate said spell trap if you have a labyrinth monster on your field for it to activate the turn it is set, which is very nice. Um, so all of these kind of pair very well together in order to give you the ability to go for your big welcome or your welcome on the first turn, even if it's your opponent's turn. So that does kind of change up the style and the way that the deck plays. It also allows you to set cards as well uh, during the opponent's turn to then use those uh, on the following turn, your turn, um, that same turn, without having to wait an additional turn, which is very cool and very good. Uh, but yeah, let's just quickly do the card by card and the explanation for a lot of these. Uh, now, obviously, this is for Master Duel, so it's going to be more Master Duel centric with things like Maxi and Ash and stuff like that and playing around all of that, as well as um, playing around like the floodgates that exist there and just the meta in general. However, I will be going over some of the things in the TCG as well, but uh, yeah, this is specifically for Master Duel and with Master Duel in mind. Um, and yes, I am going to talk about the combos towards the end of the video. Um, however, this is mostly going to be a centered on deck building and how to build the deck and then do some basic combos and basic uh, explanations of said combos. So let's quickly do the card by card uh, or the general card by card. Uh, that being uh, starting off with Ikea, or the Ikea Labyrinth, being a uh, triple Chandelier, uh, triple Stovey Torby, and at most I only see two Ku Clock. The reason for this, pretty simple, uh, Chandelier and Stovey Torby have very similar effects. Um, Stovey Torby special summons itself when a monster is returned, uh, or uh, leaves the field via normal trap, and uh, Chandelier adds itself back to hand, and then they both have the same effect, discard it, uh, as well as another card in order to set a Labyrinth spell trap. This means that uh, you can actually just discard one uh, and then discard the other with the same effect. So you discard one and the other in order to just set one card and not get both effects, which oftentimes is enough. And then, of course, they will still bring themselves back and generate that advantage again as soon as you activate something like a big welcome, which, hey, they can just set it and you're off to the races. Pretty good. So why only one to two coup clocks? Reason for it, yes, it does give you the ability to immediately activate a normal trap, and it also has the ability to special summon itself um, via uh, or after you you activate the effect of your labyrinth uh, chandelier or Stovey Torby because it does um, either special summon itself or add itself back to hand if a card is discarded for a labyrinth uh, card effect a card or effect uh, sent to the graveyard from hand to the grave uh, via the effect you are then able to special summon it or add it back to the hand which so okay why are we only playing the two because it's searchable off of ariana yes these are also searchable however the difference is if you're special summoning something you could also just add the ku clock to your hand and it's kind of bricky by itself it's not inherently like great because you do have to see one of these and then also either go first or have your chandeliers as well. So it's not really something you want to see multiples of, whereas seeing multiples of your Ikea cards isn't bad. And because it is so easily accessible and not necessarily something that you always need to have, especially going first, it's not really something that you need to have because you can just like set a few cards and you're probably fine. It's not 
always necessary. So having it being searchable as well as not being 100% necessary for your combos or just like the best thing to have for your combos all, the, all of the time means that when you do actually need it, which is normally turns two, three, and so on, uh, you can search it normally with things like Ariana. So there you go. Next up, let's talk about Big Welcome as well as Welcome Labyrinth. And uh, most of the time we're playing three Big Welcome and two Welcomes, uh, two regular Welcomes. Sometimes you can play the third. I'm not a big fan of it, but and most people aren't as well, uh, but playing the third does make sense. So let's quickly talk about Big Welcome. Big Welcome special summons a Labyrinth monster from hand to deck or grave, which is very important. And then it returns a monster you control to the hand. So this does two fantastic things. Previously, Welcome Labyrinth only specialed from deck, which is fine, but that means if you had a Lovely in your hand, it is now dead in your hand and you can't get anything from it, which means oftentimes we had to play the second Lovely, which means, again, if you end up drawing it, you're kind of screwed. So that's not great. However, Welcome Labyrinth, uh, or sorry, Big Welcome Labyrinth also does require you to bounce a monster, which does a lot of things that are actually advantageous for us. One, it gets us to trigger Chandelier, Stovey Torby, Ariana, Ariane, uh, and Lovely. All of their effects will trigger with this. Bouncing our own monster also triggers all of these effects, which gets us massive advantage. On top of that, it also has a graveyard effect, which allows you to banish it from the graveyard, then target a fiend monster you control, or if you control a level eight or higher fiend, target a card your opponent controls instead and return it to the hand. Now, again, this does two things. It triggers all of the same effects if we bounce our own card, or it just deals with problematic cards. Like for example, if your opponent has something like a floodgate on their side of the field that you need to get rid of, or a Jinzo, for example. Uh, yeah, the graveyard effect of Big Welcome Labyrinth does actually interact with that very effectively. You just have a lady on your side of the field, you activate the Big Welcome, Big Welcome then bounces whatever you need to deal with, and you're off to the races. It can also bounce an opponent's monster, which then could also trigger all of your other effects. Now, notably, this doesn't actually trigger your lady, because it is not the activation of a uh, of a trap card, a normal trap card, it is instead the effect of a normal trap card, if that makes sense. It's very weird, but basically it doesn't trigger your Lady Labyrinth to set a trap card, so do keep that in mind. Next up, we have Welcome Labyrinth, which can special summon a Labyrinth monster from the deck, and then at the end of the turn after this card's resolved, uh, or sorry, until the end of the next turn after this card's resolved, you cannot special summon uh, from the deck or extra deck except for fiend type monsters. That doesn't really come up all that often, um, mostly because we are playing basically only fiends, even in the extra. Uh, we're only basically summoning fiends, so it's fine. However, it also has the ability to uh, set itself from the graveyard if a monster leaves the field via normal trap effect. Again, with something like Big Welcome, it is able to then also reset the Welcome Labyrinth. However, this can only be done the turn after it hits the grave, so there's that. And that's basically the main important cards for the combo. We're also going to talk about Ariana. Ariana is very important as well, seeing as how it is the searcher on normal or special, you add a labyrinth card, and if a card leaves the field via uh, a, or if a monster leaves the field via a normal trap effect, you could draw a card, then you can either special summon a fiend or set a trap a spell trap, or just do nothing. Um, you could just draw the card, That's that also works. So yeah, pretty good, very good there. Let's talk about Ariane. Now, Ariane doesn't see a whole lot of play in most builds, and I would say at most you could play two. It's really not all that advantageous, and the, ma the main reason for this is because of this card, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Ash Blossom really does hinder this deck quite a bit in a myriad of ways. It stops Big Welcome, it stops Welcome Labyrinth, and it stops Ari Ain. The reason for this problem, uh, and the reason why Ari Ain sees significantly less play, is because Ash Blossom is everywhere to counter Maxi. So of course it is more common to see this and have it actually matter. And you just kind of lose advantage if it does get ashed, whereas it's not really too great even having it if it does actually work. Now, what does Ariane actually do? You can send a normal trap from your hand or that's set on your field to the graveyard. Then you special summon a level four or lower fiend monster from your deck in defense position, except itself. If another monster leaves the field during, uh, or sorry, if another normal, if another monster leaves the field via a normal trap effect, you can draw a card and apply the effect. Now, notably, this is not a hard once per turn, as much as, or er, each of the effects can be used once per turn, 
unlike Ariana. Ariana can either search or it can use the other effect. It can't use both on the same turn. However, Ariane can use both effects on that same turn. So if, for example, you pitch a trap in order to summon the Ariana, Ariana gets the search, you then activate uh, Ku Clock to then activate your Big Welcome, Big Welcome bounces a card, then Ariane is they then able to also draw a card and then potentially set or special summon a fiend. Pretty good, right? However, again, just losing all of that advantage due to Ash Blossom, while not really needing the effects to special summon Ariana, because again, Ariana isn't all that important. Yes, getting a search is very nice, but it's not the end all be all. And the card kind of requiring your normal summon and a normal trap that really oftentimes you don't have access to, or I shouldn't say you don't have access to it. It's more so that you don't have access to both of those that would make it advantageous, if that makes sense. Um, so it's like, yeah, maybe you do have a normal trap, but it's something like Big Welcome that you want to just set and get the advantage off of to summon a bigger monster that would be more advantageous. Sure, searching Ariana could then just technically do the same thing, but again, if you get Impermed, if you get Ash Blossomed, if you get Effect Alert, if you get anything, if you get interacted with basically at all, you are way down on, on advantage, and it's just not really worth it. Yeah, so there you go. However, still very good. Definitely advantageous if you actually resolve it. Okay, new card, Lady Labyrinth. This card, fantastic. While you control the set card, cannot be targeted, and it cannot be destroyed. Already fantastic. I guess it, it can be destroyed by battle, so there's that. But can't be destroyed, can't be targeted. Fantastic protection. And since there is a myriad of ways to put a set card onto the field, even during the opponent's turn, this is great. On top of that, it has a quick effect uh, special summon. Um, you can only use each of the following effects at once per turn. However, the effects consist of if a Labyrinth card is uh, active or a normal trap card was activated this turn, just at any point during this turn, including if your opponent activated a normal trap, like for example, if they were to imperm you, or if your opponent's also playing Labyrinth, you can also activate this effect. You can special summon this card from your hand in defense, posi defense position. Fantastic. Then, when a normal trap is activated, you can set a normal trap with a different name directly from your deck. Now, this is one of the main reasons why the changeup has occurred. This secondary effect, not secondary, this other effect to set a card is incredible. It is so advantageous because this allows you to basically search out any other trap card that you need. And along with Lady Labyrinth, or Lovely Labyrinth, being able to set a trap from the deck, or sorry, from the grave, uh, means that you can cycle basically one normal trap over and over and over again, and just use it a whole bunch, and it's super easy to search. If you activate a Welcome Labyrinth while this card is on the field, guess what? Now all of a sudden you can get Big Welcome, you can get Compulse, you can get a Punishment, you can get a Virus, you can get uh, Evenly Matched, you can get Imperm, you can get a myriad of other cards, which is super good. And it means that your deck can be changed in response to basically anything that your opponent would have. I just remembered something. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Lady Labyrinth is a powerhouse. And the fact that she is 3,000 attack and 2,000 defense, uh, or 2,900 defense, is fantastic. However, even with that being said, most of the time people only play her at 2. Why do I have 3 in here? Just because, yeah, sometimes people, people play her at 3 because she is really just that good. Drawing her is good. Searching her is good. Summoning her is good. Uh, you can bounce her just with Big Welcome and then immediately special summon her as like a blocker, which is also good. So yeah, in simplified game stage, she's fantastic. In non-simplified game stage, she's fantastic. She's just good. There you go. Pretty simple. Next up, Lovely Labyrinth. This was the old boss monster. Still is very good, and we're still playing one because of its powerful effect. So your opponent cannot activate monster effects in response to the activation of your normal trap cards. This is fine. This effect kind of comes up occasionally. Um, the main reason that it's useful is something like Ash Blossom. You can protect your Ash Blossom, so you're guaranteed to get things like Welcome Labyrinth and Big Welcome, but honestly, they're probably going to Ash you before this card even hits the field, because the only way you're really hitting it, or getting onto the field, is through these, so... Eh. Um, this also kind of stops things like Baron, if you were to try and Baron negate the normal trap, with Lovely, they can't really do that. But honestly, again, it very rarely comes up. However, what does come up is uh, you can use each of the following effects once per turn. The first effect, target a normal trap in the graveyard, set it to your field. It cannot be activated unless you control a fiend monster. Now again, if this card is on your field, that's not really that big of a deal because, hey, you now have a normal, or you now have a fiend on your field. 
there you go. Um, but yeah, you can set anything. So again, with this being able to search anything and this being able to reset it, you basically have infinite activations of whatever you need. It's great. On top of that, the second effect, when another monster leaves the field via a normal traffic trap effect, you can destroy a card in your opponent's hand or on their field. First of all, non-targeting. Doesn't target, pop a card, fantastic. Already great. However, you can also rip a card out of your opponent's hand. Meaning, if for example, you have both access to a welcome labyrinth and a big welcome labyrinth, or during your first turn, you can go normal summon something, activate a big welcome with something like Ku Clock activatable, bounce said normal summon back to the hand with lovely lady on the field, you are then able to pop a card in your opponent's hand on the first turn, ripping an additional card, making them have five cards in their starting hand, um, and then, you know, or I should say starting with five cards after their draw. So that's pretty good, if I do say so myself. On top of that, you can also do this during the draw phase of the next turn, putting them down to four cards as well, because you can just go big welcome, bounce another card, or, you know, activate it again, or whatever it may be. Uh, so yeah, again, very strong. So yeah, oftentimes, however, we're only playing one. Why? Because she's a brick. You never want to see her in your hand, ever. And the reason for that is because, again, with Welcome Labyrinth, you want to summon her off of the Welcome Labyrinth most of the time, so that you don't have to bounce a card as well. Um, not most of the time, but like some of the time. Uh, and then on top of that, just having her in hand is, is problematic. It's just kind of a dead card. So yeah, just not really good to draw. So you just play the one. There's, I've seen people play two, and it's mostly in more Floodgate floodgate variant versions to just have like another big body onto your side of the field, which isn't bad, but most of the time just one. Next up we have Labyrinth, Labyrinth. Uh, this again, used to be played at two most of the time. I, I've never actually seen this at more than one now, so we're just having the one. If you activate, sorry, <clears throat> if you activate a set welcome normal trap, uh, you can add the additional effect to pop a card on the field after resolution. This means that if you are able to special summon out with your big welcome or your welcome labyrinth, you are then able to additionally pop a card via the effect of your welcome labyrinths. That means this also triggers your monster effects. Your uh, your lovely, your Ariane, your Ariana, your Sovi Torby, and your Chandelier all will trigger because it is technically giving the effect to the normal trap, not to the spell. So the spell is not the one that's activating, it's the traps that are activating to pop a card, giving you additional disruption. This used to be fantastic, however, it's now more niche because, again, we have Welcome Labyrinth to actually get that the same effect, basically. Um, so there you go. Cool. However, it does have a second, it, it does have a secondary effect. The second effect is if you activate a non-Labyrinth normal trap card, you can special summon a fiend from hand or, sorry, sorry, from hand or grave, uh, which means that you can bring back something like a lovely that ended up dying, or you could special summon something like an Ariana without having to use your normal, or you could just, you know, special one of these guys as well just to get another body onto your side of the field. Pretty good. Uh, however, this is only if you activate a labyrinth, a non-labyrinth card. Pretty good, nonetheless. All of these are pretty standard, as I talked about. The rest of these are the labyrinth cards that the, no one realistically plays, and you'll see why in a second. Set up, target two of your Labyrinth spell traps that are banished or in your graveyard, except itself, shuffle them into the deck. Then, if you control a Fiend monster, you can set a lab non-Labyrinth normal trap from with different names directly from your deck equal to the number shuffled. You can only activate this once per turn. Now, in theory, this sounds pretty good. However, it does require you to have two different, uh, or, or sorry, it does require you to have two Labyrinth spell traps that are banished or in your graveyard in order to activate it. And also, if you want to set cards, you also have to control a fiend. It's just a little bit too hampering in its requirements. It's not terrible. It's not bad. It's just fine, right? Um, the reason most people don't play this is because it's mostly breaky. You're not really wanting to see this until you're already in deep with your other cards, and you don't really even want to shuffle them back because, again, they're in the great. If they're in the graveyard. They can just be reset. The only thing you're really wanting to shuffle back here is something like Big Welcome that you've already banished to get its graveyard effect. Which, sure, fine, but you do still have to target two, not up to two, target two of them. And then on top of that, yes, the set cards are fine, but again, you do have to control a fiend at that point. So it's just a little bit too niche. Still decent and still definitely playable if you want to play more of a pure version of this deck without relying on a myriad of other, like, hand traps or stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this deck's, this card's decent. 
Next up, we have Barrage. Uh, when you activate a set normal trap card except itself, this effect becomes that normal trap's effect when that card is activated. Also, until the end of the opponent's next turn, after this card resolves, your opponent takes no effect damage from your card effects. So basically, this is saying, like, you could just copy an effect of a normal trap card. It's fine, but it's not very good. You could potentially summon two things off of Big Welcome. You could potentially activate the effect of Dimensional Barrier twice and call do different things. You could activate a Virus twice and call Spell and Trap. In theory, it's good. In practice, you could also just reactivate the card. You have Lovely, it's fine. You could just wait a turn and activate it again. Again, this card's just not really good enough. It's not bad, it's just like... You could just have a different card. It's kind of bricky. It doesn't really do anything by itself. You're not special summoning a monster or anything like that. Sure, it's searchable, but eh, it's just not really worth it. You could play it. Not really worth it. And then we have Fair Welcome Labyrinth. When a monster declares an attack, while you control a fiend monster, target a card on the field, negate that attack, and if you do, destroy the targeted card. Then you can set a non-Labyrinth normal trap from your hand or deck. Again, not bad, but it does require your opponent to declare an attack while you have a set card and a fiend and then it also requires you to target a card on the field negate the attack and then destroy the targeted card then you get to reap the advantages it's just kind of meh it's again not bad it's just not really worth it to play when you could play again a myriad of other cards that would just work better better in more generalist situations and then of course we have labyrinth archfiend this card is crazy in an r format not really in any other format. Next up, uh, or sorry, uh, gains 400 attack for each normal trap with a different name in your graveyard. Pretty good. However, uh, your opponent's monsters cannot target fiend monsters for attacks except this card. Again, pretty good. It's already got 2008, uh, 2028, which is pretty good as well. And then you can only use the following effects at once per turn. If a trap card is activated, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is special summon, you can set a normal trap from your deck uh, that can be used uh, when in attack is declared. So this is normally supposed to be paired with something like Fair Welcome, uh, but you could also pair it with things like Drowning Mirror Force or what have you. This is fine. Again, it's decent. Its stipulation, however, is the way that its special summons itself is a bit problematic, and it doesn't honestly get all that big, mostly due to the fact that these are probably the things that you have in the graveyard, so it's probably only going to be like 28, maybe a little bit more, um, but yeah, it's not going to be all that big. So it's just kind of not worth it for the payoff. Yeah, being able to set a trap is pretty nice. Being able to uh, special summon it pretty easily is nice. But again, it's just kind of a dead card in hand if you already have a trap that could just special summon it anyway. So just not really worth it. Not bad, but again, not really worth it. None of these are bad cards. These are all good cards. And in other archetypes, they would definitely see play. But in this archetype, they're just not really worth it. You could just go without them. Next up, uh, we have just Staples, Pot of Extravagance. You don't really need the extra deck too much. That's fine. Uh, same with Pot of Prosperity. Maxi, Staple. Uh, Ash Blossom, absolutely a Staple. Called by, you know... All of these are just generic cards that you would play, along with Infip. Infip is just good. It's a normal trap. However, it doesn't remove a card from the field, but it is a normal trap that you can chain things uh, Lady to, which is nice. And it is a normal trap that you can also use as a hand trap, which is also good. Um, and you can also set it off of a lady, which is, again, pretty decent. Uh, next up, let's talk about monsters that you can utilize with the Labyrinth cards. That being Eldritch. It's just Eldritch. He just does stuff. Uh, with Spells and Traps, he's pretty good. He's big. He's easy to summon. Yada yada. He's removal. He's a big boss monster. He is the Golden Lord. Next up, we have the other Lord, Lord of the Heavenly Prison, and this will be more used with Floodgate or, like, trap heavy decks and not so much with the ikea versions and the reason for this is because it's just not as useful in those versions because he's kind of dead card in hand you normally want to like empty your hand uh, or have like cards that you can discard with your uh with your chandelier and your sophie tori um, and stuff like that and honestly you're not really relying on the protection from your uh from your opponent's back row removal and uh, evenly matched exists so you know <laughs> sometimes that just doesn't matter but, I mean, still a decently good card, being able to special summon itself, being able to protect your back row, being able to even set up additional back row, or even something like Pot of Extravagance, which is fantastic. Yeah, all in all, it's great. If you're playing more Floodgates, again, or just more back row, like more normal traps and the, the like, yeah, absolutely. This should be included as well. Pretty simple. 
Uh, I've also seen people playing Keldo and Mudora as shufflers because you can discard them and against tier they're pretty good or just branded or anything really in general. Um, even against Labyrinth it's pretty good. So they're decent. I'm not a big fan of them mostly because again they are just kind of bricks. Um, you don't really want to see these alongside like just a whole bunch of traps. Um, you really want to see them specifically with these guys so that they can go into the graveyard and just fulfill that discard requirement. So it's not really worth it for me, but I, I still think that they're good. Um, they're great disruptions, and uh, yeah, you can just discard, discard them, and you're fine. And then, of course, the Exchange of the Spirit is also a thing that you can play as well, because it's funny. Um, next up, let's talk about all of the traps. There are a lot, as you can tell. There is a whole bunch. So we're going to go over them pretty quickly, starting off with the more standard ones. Eradicator Epidemic Virus is a must-have. Right now, it's currently limited to one in Master Duel, and uh, for good reason. This card is absolutely insane. Uh, yeah, guess what? This, which is easy to summon, and this, which is also easy to summon, are dark monsters that are 2,500 or more attack, and yeah, you just get to rip all of your spells or all of the traps out of your opponent's hand or on their field. It's great. On top of that, however, not only do you get to stop your opponent, uh, from using spells or something like that, you also get to look at your opponent's hand, which is invaluable right now. It is so incredibly powerful to be able to look at your opponent's hand and go, that, I know what I'm playing against, that is what I have to deal with, fantastic. Sometimes I've literally activated this, seen an entire hand full of monsters, realized I didn't get anything out of it, but now I know, oh, this is the monster that I need to interact with. This is the spell, this is the trap, this is the whatever it may, may be that I need to get or need to use uh, at the right time, right? For example, reveal a whole bunch of branded cards, and you're like, okay, cool, I need to save my Ash for this. Reveal Adam Emancipator, cool, I need to make sure that I get rid of that rock monster that's on their field, right? Very good. Uh, yeah, this card should also be banned. Just pretty simple, ban it. Uh, next up, we have Punishment. Punishment is fantastic. Hey, we don't need the extra deck, fine, we'll just get rid of the cards in the extra deck. Um, yeah, pretty simple. Don't really have to explain this one too much. Next up, Compulse. Bounce a card. Yeah, pretty good. Just target bounce. Yeah. Hey, you can bounce your own card, which also triggers their effects. Great. Uh, Dimensional Barrier is another boring card that no one likes. It's a floodgate. Yay. Um, yeah, just call whatever you need. Again, you can also find this after looking at your opponent's hand with something like Eradicator, and then activate Ku Clock and activate it and be like, mm, no fusions for you, lol. And then, of course, evenly matched. Uh, evenly matched is more for going second, but it's still good. Um, being able to, like, set it and threaten it, you know, threaten at end of battle with, from your opponent, it's not bad. Next up, we have a whole bunch of counter traps that are specifically designed to, like, protect your back row. Uh, Dark Bribe, Red Reboot, Seven Tools, not too great. I'm not a big fan of any of these. Red Reboot, Red Reboot in particular is just kind of mid. But Solemn Judgment, good. Probably should play it. One or two copies. I wouldn't... You could play three, definitely, but I wouldn't play it uh, too heavily. It is nice to protect your back row from things like Evenly Matched or um, Harpy's Feather Duster or Lightning Storm or anything like that, but not too necessary. And then Solemn Strike as well is pretty good. Um, as for the rest of these, these are all just floodgates mostly. Uh, the three that I would normally use is things like Skill Drain, Rivalry, and Gozin. You can also throw in uh, an additional uh, Anti Spell, which is also pretty good. I think Anti Spell is at two, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. It might be at one, um, but I think all of the other three are at one. Actually, I know all of the other three are at one, so there's that. Next up, you could play Summon Limit if you wanted to be a more like slow pace deck, but this deck can obviously summon way more than two times per turn, mostly due to the fact that you can activate Big Welcome, you can activate Welcome Labyrinth, you can activate Lovely Lady, uh, or sorry, not Lovely Lady, uh, Lady, you can activate Ariana, not Ariana, Ariane, um, you can special summon Stovey Torby, you can special summon Ku Clock, and you can just normal summon. So, lots of summons that you can do, as well as any potential extra deck plays as well, so some of them it's not the greatest in this deck, but alas, there you go. Uh, we also have Lose a Turn, Things like Light Imprisoning Mirror, Soul Drain, Stygian Dirge, depending on the meta. These are available options. I'm not a big fan of them. They don't trigger any of your effects. They're just kind of floodgates and not really all that useful. Um, and then let's talk about the rest of the normal traps that are were actually that would actually be decent. Lost Wind, just good card overall. Yeah, pretty good. Just not strong enough most of the time. Uh, we also have Full Force to deal with your opponent's monsters. So you can deal with your opponent's monsters. You can deal with your opponent's... Um, Spell traps. So, there you go. 
This does require high defense, but hey, look at that, it's high defense. Uh, as well as Ariana also has high enough defense for this. So there you go. Uh, next up, things like Floodgate Trap Hole or just Trap Holes in general, also playable. Um, Drowning Mirror Force can also be something, or just any Mirror Force in general, can also be something to play alongside Archfiend, which is pretty interesting. And it's just a good card, but uh, you know, it's a bit more telegraphed when you set it off of a lady and now they know, hey, I need to deal with this card because it's drowning before I attack. Cool. A pointer of the Red Lotus is very interesting. Hey, being able to rip a card out of your opponent's hands is pretty nice. However, the problem with this card in Labyrinth in particular is they're most likely going to get the card back. You're probably not going to kill them before your opponent's next end phase, nor are you really going to be able to like entirely shut them out of the game before the opponent's next end phase. So it's really not that great. It's not bad, but it's not great. Uh, similarly, Life Force Sword, I've seen people looping this in order to banish cards from your opponent's hand. It's not very good, but it's an option. Ice Dragon's Prison is good. Uh, Paleozoics are fine. Um, you could play Terrors of the Over Terrors of the Overroot, which is actually pretty good right now in Master Duel, so definitely an option. It is a UR, so do keep that in mind. Um, but target a card in uh, your opponent controls and a card in their graveyard. Send the first one to the graveyard, not destroy it. Send it to the graveyard, and then set the other one. Honestly, yeah, just being able to get rid of any card your opponent controls is pretty nice. Uh, Trap Trick is also available in more trap-centric builds. Uh, Torrential is also very good in similar builds. Uh, Super Team Buddy Force, if you don't know what this is, it's a very funny card. But yeah, it just gets you an additional fiend onto your side of the field, while also triggering things like Lady Labyrinth. So there you go. Uh, just specifically only special summon from hand or grave. So not the greatest, but it's something. Um, if you want additional protection from back row removal, specifically destruction, Starlight Road with Stardust Dragon is, hey, pretty good. You can also play more stun cards if you wanted to with things like Ojama Trio or Ojama Duo. Uh, we also have things like Reckless Greed, which is kind of funny. Just draw two, skip your next two draw phases, but hey, you got draw two. That's pretty good. And then specifically in the TCG and a card that I do expect to come to Master Duel at some point, as well as the OCG, um, and, and would absolutely change the way that uh, Labyrinth plays, Daruma Cannon. This card is crazy. Destructive, Daruma, Karma, Cannon. Change as many monsters on the field as possible to face down defense position. Then if either player controls a face-up monster, you can send all face-up monsters they control to the graveyard. Hey, you Link Summoned. All of your other cards are face down and get rid of that Link Summoned monster because you have to get rid of it, not me. You do. Uh, now, notably, this still triggers the effects via all of these guys, which is very, very funny. But yeah, this is a very, very strong card. Uh, just being able to flip everything face down and be like, oh, you summon three monsters that you wanted to utilize to go into a link play? No. Just no. So, you know, very funny. Uh, yeah, very good card. Next up, we have the extra deck, which we're going to talk about. Um, all of the traps, there are a myriad more. There are so many traps available to you, uh, all of which are pretty decent. Um, but yeah. Next up, the, we have the extra deck. Uh, Bucephalos, very interesting. Punishment target, mostly because it is the 3500, and it allows you to send Garura to go draw a card. So it's a good way to deal with big boss monsters while still getting advantage. Pretty nice. Then we have Entis, pretty standard. Uh, Chaos Angel, which is just around the corner in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, but not quite, uh, not quite in the game. Basically, just requires two lights or darks. That's it. And guess what? You can treat a light or dark, you control as a tuner. Guess what? It's a level 10, I believe. Am I wrong? What level is this? Yeah, level 10. It's a level 10 that happens to be summonable without a an extra deck, uh, or a, um, a, a, a tuner, basically. Which means you summon this with Sovi Torvi and a level 8. Or Maxi, also works. And a level 8. Hey, these are level 8s. Fantastic. You summon out the Chaos Angel. What does it do? If this card is special summoned, you can target a card in the field. Banish it. This card gains these effects based on the original attributes of materials used for Synchro Summon. If it's a light, Synchro Monsters you control are unaffected by a monster's activated effects by your opponents. And if it's dark, your opponent cannot, or monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. Honestly, doesn't really matter. It's just a banish, which is pretty good. 
And next up, we have some Xyz. We have Baguska. We have Redoer. We have things like Zeus. Any other rank fours, pretty decent. You could also go for like rank eights, because again, these are eights, so you could do that. Uh, we also have other such fiends, like for example, Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn. Yes, they're all fiends for some reason. Uh, also, Muckracker. Muckracker is a new card from the most recent set, alongside of the Labyrinth cards. But uh, yeah, it's actually very good to affect monsters. It also allows you to reborn a fiend. Pretty decent. Uh, and it's also protection for your monsters, which is very good. And then, of course, Underworld Goddess. Hey, this isn't also a fiend, which is kind of funny. So, yeah, even if you're under the fiend lock, you can still link away your opponent's board. And that's basically it for the deck building section. I'm going to hop into some uh, basic combos and show you how that performs. All right, let's start off with one of the most important combos to know with Labyrinth. That being Chandelier or Stovey Torby and any other discard, um, including themselves, and Ku Clock. This is the basic combo that can be done on either player's turn that gets you massive advantage. So let's start off here with the Stovey Torby. You're going to activate the effect of the Stovey Torby, Stovey Torby first. Sorry, not Stovey Torby. The Ku Clock first. Wait for its effect to resolve. And then we can activate our other effect, which would discard two cards. Whether that is the Chandelier or the Stovey Torby doesn't really matter. This would then allow us to grab up our big welcome. So we're going to uh, set this to the Spell and Trap card zone. And then immediately we can activate it. This, oh, sorry, sorry. First and foremost, we can't actually activate it because uh, this would actually trigger the Ku Clock. Ku Clock then special summons itself or adds itself back to the hand. If you already have a monster on field, there's no real point in uh, special summoning the Ku Clock. You can just bounce that card back to your hand. Unless you want to keep the other card um, uh, on your field after resolving the Big Welcome, it's, yeah, it's up to you. Um, like, for example, if you have uh, a like, lovely lady or something like that already on your field, maybe you want to actually special summon the Ku Clock depends, right? Uh, anyway, we're going to go now for the big welcome. You could also go for welcome labyrinth here, depending on what your circumstances are. But most of the time, just almost every single time, you're going to go for the big welcome. Big welcome will then activate its effect in order to special summon out one of two cards, either lovely la or either lovely labyrinth or uh, Lady Labyrinth. Most of the time, it's Lovely Labyrinth here because it gets you the ability to pop a card because, hey, this card hits the field before you bounce a card to your hand, meaning this card sees that a card has left the field via the effect of a normal trap to then pop a card. Fantastic. Or you could go for Lovely if you need to just get an additional body onto your side of the field or additional protection. Most of the time you're going to do this if you already have access to another set card or you already have a set card. Now, notably, what this also does is it triggers not only your Lovely Labyrinth, but it will also trigger things like your Sovi Torby and your Chandelier. Fantastic. This is great because it immediately regenerates the resources that you so needed. For example, Ku Clock hits, the, hits your hand again. You also get access to your Chandelier again, or you get to special summon out your, your Stovey Torby, while also potentially popping a card. This can also be done, again, on the opponent's first turn. You don't even have to wait for the main phase. You could just do this at any time, which is, again, wild and very strong. So before they even have a chance to potentially play the game, you are also playing the game as well, which is pretty cool. Or you could obviously wait for them to actually summon something and then potentially deal with that summon. So also very good. Basic combo, this is what you need to know. All right, so how do we abuse Eradicator Epidemic Virus to rip our entire opponent's hand apart before they even have a chance to play the game? This is obviously what most people are going to want to do because it's the most effective thing to do. Uh, so the basic requirements are either access to Lady Labyrinth or Ku Clock, as well as Big Welcome and Welcome Labyrinth, or a way to get Labyrinth or Lady Labyrinth onto the field and have a trap that is chainable that isn't going to deal with the Lady Labyrinth on the field. So something like Compulse, while you also have a monster already on your side of the field, that you could then activate to bounce said monster and then trigger the Lady Labyrinth without having to use Ku Clock. It's very specific, but basically it's just easier with these two, which honestly isn't too difficult. If you have one of them, which you drew, and then your access to your Chandelier or your Sovi Torby, you're then able to set the other one and boom, you get it as well as either having the Lady Labyrinth or the Ku Clock, whether that's normal summoning Ariana to get one of these or whatever it may be, right? Again, not too difficult. Anyway, with this, what we're going to do is we're going to start with Welcome Labyrinth. We're going to activate the effect of the Welcome Labyrinth to special summon out either Lady or Ku Clock. Then, in a new chain, 
Uh, this will go to the graveyard. We're going to special summon out Lady Labyrinth or whatever it may be, may be activate the Ku Clock, whatever it is, right? Um, anyway, then we can activate the big welcome. Now, since Labyrinth, Lady Labyrinth is on the field in the new chain, we can activate the, the big welcome, which will then activate the Labyrinth, uh, the Lady Labyrinth. Lady Labyrinth is a when effect, so if your opponent chains something to said big welcome, you can't activate this. But let's just assume that they don't have anything here that they can actually activate. Um, so we're going to then go for the big welcome, which would then summon whatever it may be. It doesn't really matter here. Obviously, the best choice is to go for the lovely here. Um, and then we can bounce this card to our hand. Also, uh, sorry, Lady would activate first and would resolve with the setting of the Eradicator. So now Eradicator is set to our back row and we have the Ku Clock in hand. So we're going to send that to the graveyard. And again, we technically could have done this as well. Uh, just, you know, special summon out the lady and then go for the Ku Clock with the big welcome, bouncing the Ku Clock to the hand immediately. But, you know, doesn't really matter here or there. Now we go and activate the effect of the Ku Clock, which then gives us the ability to activate this Eradicator, activating its effect, tributing off... I guess we could tribute off either of these, uh, but we're going to tribute off this guy to the graveyard. And then look at our opponent's hand, rip cards out of it. Fantastic. Also, then if we have access to things like um, the Chandelier or the Stoky Torby, they would also bounce our, uh, or uh, add themselves back to the hand or onto the field because of uh, Big Welcome's effect. So that's pretty cool as well. Uh, so yeah, that's again a very simple combo that you need to know. Now, you don't always have to search the virus there for that... Uh, previous play, that could be anything, realistically. Uh, you could search Dimensional Barrier, you could search Dogmatic Punishment, you could search whatever it may be that you may might need in that situation. You could, I guess you can't, you could search uh, Stardust Road, which would then give you protection against things like back row removal, which is also very funny. Um, but let's quickly talk about Big Welcome. One of the biggest things that it can do that you just need to keep in mind is the fact that you could just special summon out your uh, Lady Labyrinth, immediately bounce it to hand, and then also just immediately activate the effect of the Lady Labyrinth to special summon it again to either get a blocker or just have another body onto your side of the field. Now, this also would trigger things like the Stovey Torby and the Chandelier, which then you could utilize to set a card to give additional protection to Lady Labyrinth. Fantastic. That's basically all, you, all that you need to know. Pretty good. All right, real quick, I just want to show you all of the cards that will activate if a card leaves the field. Uh, obviously, Big Welcome isn't supposed to be here, but this is fine. Um, in the graveyard, you have access to Welcome Labyrinth, Chandelier, and Stoby Tori. Sorry, I said card, I meant monster. If a monster leaves the field via normal trap effect, Welcome Labyrinth, Chandelier, and Stoby Tori will all activate. Notably, Labyrinth will not activate the turn it is sent to the graveyard. However, if it is the next turn, you are totally fine. And you can then reset this card, add this card to your hand, like so. Uh, sorry, here. You can reset this card, and then you can also special summon the Stoby Torby. On top of that, Ariana will draw you a card. Lovely Lady will pop a card, either on field or from your opponent's hand, randomly. And Ariane will also draw a card. On top of that, Labyrinth Labyrinth will then give you the ability to special summon a monster from your hand, like for example, uh, or from the grave, like for example, a Lady Labyrinth. Not that you would need that access, uh, but yeah, you can also do that if you activate a non-Labyrinth normal trap, which is, again, lots of things to think about and lots of things that could potentially generate that additional advantage. As you see here, we just we just got three additional cards onto our hand, on into our hand. We popped a card. We were able to then also special summon a card if we needed to, as well as we special summoned a second card all off of one card activation, which is, hey, pretty decent. All right, lovely Lady Labyrinth. This card is actually very good. Uh, and there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. One, if you activate the effect in order to grab a set uh, or set a normal trap, this also can include the labyrinth cards, which I forgot to put in here, but that's fine. Uh, basically, this means that you are able to reset things like Big Welcome to then use it later. So if you, you know, special summon out this guy uh, during your first turn, you rip a card out of your opponent's hand, and then you're also to reset that Big Welcome. Even though, yes, it does have a graveyard effect, sometimes it's just more useful to get that on-field effect because, hey, it also triggers other effects, like, for example, a disruption. So, you know, pretty good. But 
Notably, these all require a monster, a fiend type of monster, to be on the field. So for example, if you did active, actually activate the effect, you wouldn't be able to then also have this activatable if your cards are removed. So for example, if they go like Dark Hole and to deal with your board, all of a sudden your dimensional barrier is now dead. Or if, for example, they chain their own trap or other such removal to said activation, like for example, if they ghost over you on the lovely effect, then, well, all of a sudden, you're not able to activate that card. So do keep that in mind. That is something very important to keep in mind with the lovely. Um, and that's kind of all that you need to know with lovely. All right, let's talk Ariana, the best searcher for this archetype. And honestly, the only card that you're realistically going to be normal summoning. Sometimes I normal summon Chandelier, but that's very rare. This card is fantastic. It does many things for you. One, it can either search out a Welcome or a Big Welcome Labyrinth, which is great. It can also search out things like Sophie Torby or Chandelier or a, even a Lady, but most importantly, it can search out the Ku Clock. Again, it's searchable, which is why we're playing less copies of it. But most of the time, if you have Oriana, you probably have access to something like a Labyrinth, uh, or a Sylvie Torby, uh, a Chandelier, or one of the Big Welcomes, or something like that, and having a monster already on your side of the field means that you don't need that additional requirement for the Coup Clock. So being able to search out and add to your hand that Coup Clock means that you can then just immediately freely activate whether uh, your Big Welcome or your regular Welcome, which is great. That gives you additional access to additional cards, etc., etc. So. Again, most of the time, Ariana is going to be able to search out that Ku Clock, but she's very good just in general. And having her on the field for other various effects means that you can also draw into additional disruption, which is, again, very good. There is something very important as well to remember with Labyrinth, and it is the fact that normal traps that specifically deal with monsters are very important, and almost more important than other such cards. For example, if you draw Skill Drain, it may actually be more more, more worthwhile to discard it for something like a Chandelier to get a big welcome so that you can then actually activate your effects and reset your advantage, or just the amount of cards that you have available to you. For example, here, Yes, we could activate Dimensional Barrier, locking our opponents out of the key resource that they need. We could also activate Skill Drain, or Anti-Spell Fragrance, or whatever it may be, but the most valuable card on our field isn't any of those, it's Compulse. Reason being, Compulse will trigger three cards in Grave, as well as Ariana, to generate so much more advantage and get us back into the game. Which means that no matter what, even if our hand is empty, a single card can be all that we need. A single Compulse to eventually just fill our hand, or to just fill our board once again. A single spot removal can be enough to immediately get you back into that game, and it is something to keep in mind. This is all about the resources that you have. It's not about the big effects, it's not about the big monsters, it's not about each individual card being more powerful than the next. It's about being able to do that consistently over and over with a lot of different cards. Yes, Eradicator for five is fantastic. It feels great to be able to rip five runic cards out of your opponent's hand and watch them cry. Everyone likes that. Let's stop. Let, let, let's be honest with ourselves. We all like that. Even though you feel like a devil afterwards, yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. But realistically, this is all about just consistently getting your cards back to your hand filling up your advantage meter to the to the max so that you are constantly having more cards than your opponents so that you have more options, right? More cards equals more options. More options me means that you are more likely to win that game because you just have more available to you. So again, it's more about actually seeing those normal traps and actually removing those cards from your opponent or even from yourself sometimes. Sometimes it's just better to compose your own card so that you can just save up for the next turn. As long as you're not going to die, it's probably more worthwhile. That being said, Skill Drain is still bullshit and should absolutely steal games for you. And that's basically all that I have. Sure, I could go over specific combos and stuff like that, but honestly, they're probably very niche and not really going to be all that useful in terms of me actually explaining a specific combo to you. Sure, I could explain like, oh, Muckracker can then bring back something like a lovely lady, and then you can activate a trap card, and then yada yada, and etc, etc, and what have you, and 
it could teach you something, but honestly, you're probably going to be better off just knowing the basics and not really getting overwhelmed. And honestly, deck building is far more important than I think a lot of people give credit for, and I really do want to emphasize the importance of deck building. Obviously, this is a terrible deck, don't, don't copy this card for card, but hopefully this video did give you an explanation on each card and what it does. There's a reason I put things in the order that I did. Here are some options. Here are the trap cards that are most played, right here, these four, um, you even have, I guess, these five. And then you have additional options down here if you're choosing other things, uh, as well as Daruma Karma Cannon, which is very good. But all in all, these are just some of the options available to you. So hopefully this gave you an incitive or in, uh, some insight into how this deck is played and the intricacies of it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy it. If you did, a like is very much appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.